up, everybody? How y'all doing? It is your girl, your diva, and knowledge, Lady Mocha. Represent Mocha's Cafe, Dead Patterns, where I'm always serving you with some knowledge and spiritual awareness. Big ups to all of my subscribers. Again, I'm so grateful for each and every one of y'all for still rocking with me, still supporting me, still supporting your girl, Mocha's Cafe, Dead Patterns. I am forever grateful. And um, again, I want to thank each and every one of y'all. Those of you who have recently subscribed, I welcome you to Mocha's Cafe Day Paris family. And ladies, if you have not already, please make sure you subscribe to Mocha's Ladies Lounge. That is my channel specifically for women and about women. Um, so if you get a chance, if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure that y'all do so. So moving right along, I thought it was very imperative that I'm talking about this because this is a common issue um, that has always occurred and will continue to occur. Uh, and you know it's regarding to these appetizers, these salads, coleslaws, side chicks, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, side chicks will always exist and they will continue to exist because you just have some men out here who don't mind jeopardizing their future. They don't mind jeopardizing their marriage. Um, anything to fulfill lust, anything to fulfill their own desires and not taking into account all of what they can lose in the event they're exposed in the event um, that something tragic comes out of an event, uh, out of out of um, a situation involving a side chick. So I thought it was imperative that I discuss this. And the reason I chose to speak on this particular topic is because I am definitely a fan of this show called Love and Marriage in Huntsville. Now, I'm not sure how many of y'all are reality show fanatics or not, but I really don't do reality shows like I used to because a lot of them are scripted. Um, a lot of them are overrated, and it's just too much ratchetness going on. And keep and keep in mind, you know, I'm 42 years old. So um, ratchetness, the ratchet reality shows like Love and Hip Hop and, um, you know, uh, you know, black ink, you know, things like that used to appeal to me, you know, when I was in my middle thirties or my late twenties, but, um, you know, flavor love and I love New York, you know, all of these, you know, reality shows, bad girls clubs, I, stuff like that used to intrigue me. But as I'm older, as I've become older, I'm just not interested in those type of reality shows anymore because they're so scripted. You can tell they're actually, um, customizing they're actually customizing drama they're creating drama it's just not real and it's just not authentic um like it used to be when reality shows first started becoming popular but there is this one reality show that's far different from that it's love and marriage in huntsville and i have been following the show for quite some time since the first season um i'm not sure how many of y'all are aware of the show but basically it is a show um from own network that is based on successful black married couples um, that have real estate companies, real estate agencies, um, different businesses, different uh, you know uh, private owned businesses, and it's uh, it's definitely started off originally as a um, an inspiring reality show for married black couples, you know, who are interested in building upon businesses, building upon wealth, um, definitely something for couples who definitely want to start an empire. So the show was built um, predominantly on that when it first initially started airing. And it made it pretty interesting, but of course, um, as you begin to film over time, you know, all of the positive, all of the, the wonderful things that originally made the show interesting sooner than later, Things start unfolding. Things start unraveling because, you know, none of us have the perfect life. And even more so, it starts getting revealed when you're constantly in front of the cameras. Um, when you have these cameras following you in your household, following you in your marriage. Eventually, the cameras, the audience is, start, is going to start noticing flaws. They're going to start seeing um, that this perfect persona that a lot of these couples put up, you know, eventually it starts to unfold, it starts to unravel. And slowly but surely, you know, here comes the snakes coming out the grass. Um, and there's, a, it's, it's like four couples um, on the show, I think, um, Tisha, Marceau, Kimmy, and um, her husband, 
and uh, Mel Melody and Melanie Hope and Martell Hope, uh, which is the main couples of in, main couple of interest that I'm going to be discussing. So I think it's like four different couples on there, and a couple of times it had a uh, other couples who were on the show but then ended up divorcing. So you know, you know how this reality show goes. People don't ever stay together for a long time sooner than later. Um. So it's been a, a a couple of um cast changes throughout the seasons, but uh one of the couples who have been standing out as having the most trouble has been Miss Melanie Holt and Mr. Martell Martell Holt. Um, basically, they they the show perceived them as a high power couple who was over a real estate agency, and they really had something that. A lot of black men and black women uh, strive to get, you know, and they basically um, accomplish something that a lot of black men and black women have not been able to accomplish. Um, they were able to accomplish a business and a marriage uh, and, and was able to merge both in one. And then they created a family. Um, Mar Mar Melanie didn't come. In the marriage with kids from previous um, relationships, and Martell Hope also did not come into enter into the marriage with Melanie with children from previous relationships, ex husband, ex wives, and I think that's phenomenal when a black man and a black woman can create a family together and start from scratch. There's no uh, pre-bonds. There's no pre-relationships. There's not children who have already been conceived from previous relationships. I really think that's awesome. And I admire when you can have a black couple who can start their own legacy. And um, not bring any excess baggage from the past. Um, not children. Not ex-wives. Not ex-husbands. So they had already was pretty much, they started off on a good foot. Um, a very good marriage, like I said, had a business, had children, and over time, you know, as the show continued to progress, as usual with these reality shows, um, these couples, things start coming out, you know, slowly but surely, we start seeing things unfold, and the breaking point when things started really unraveling was when Martell's infidelities started coming out throughout the show and I honestly if anybody who has been watching the show or who hasn't I recommend that you binge watch um, if you are in a marriage or if you're thinking about marriage it, it would definitely give you a different insight and I will say do not use this as a reference to not get married and do not use this as a reference to question your marriage um, because a lot of times we, people tend to do that. They look at things that are transpiring, especially negative things that are transpiring in a marriage, and then they look at it and use it as an excuse not to want to be married. See, that's why I'm not married. Look at what they got to go through. Look at what they got to deal with and vice versa. So anyway, uh, Martel evidently had an issue with keeping his dick in his pants, and it became a rift in a marriage, and it got to the point to where a lot of of the audience, you know, a lot of the fans, a lot of us who are fans of the show really started getting annoyed, becoming very annoyed with Martell and his whole shenanigans, his male Jezebel shenanigans. Um, he had no problem with, you know, uh, being very disrespectful to his wife. Um, again, only those of us who have been following this show for seasons know the in and outs, and Martell has definitely been a yeast infection, you know, through, through this whole, through, through, the, through the majority of the filming of this show, season by season by season. Season one wasn't bad, you know, because I said initially, like all these, you know, reality show couples, we see all the good sides. He seemed like such an ideal husband, you know, he's very attentive to his children, I will give him that. He's extremely attentive to his children. I mean, it's not too many men who actually cook for their kids, who actually sit down and help their kids with their homework. He was very an attentive father, you know, and that's something that a lot of black households and a lot of black marriages are missing. You have a lot of women 
um, who have husbands that are providers, who have husbands that are, are, are great at fixing things and repairing things and are great businessmen, but they lack in the father department. You know, you have a lot of men, you know, and I'm not saying this to say all men have this issue, but the majority of them, majority of men feel like as long as they work and as long as they're providing, they really don't feel like they have to make an extra effort into being a father. They pretty much leave that on the woman to do. Um, the wife has to be the mother and the father. Hey, I'm working. I'm paying the bills. I'm the one that's taking care of everything. You have some men that have that kind of attitude that don't feel like they have to be a father. Um, and uh, Martel was far from that. He was a very attentive father. But as always, is a catch-22 because, ladies, there's no such thing as a perfect man. He's either going to be a wonderful husband but suck as a father or he's going to be a great damn dad, father but suck as a husband. And same thing with us as women. You have some men that are married to women that are wonderful mothers, but they suck as wives. You know, he can't communicate with his wife. He can't get his wife um to to be supportive of him in his business ventures or you know she may be a great wife but she sucks as a mother you know she does not discipline the children um uh, she pretty much leaves it on him to have to do all the parenting so um when it comes to a companion we have to realize for everything we want is going to always come in with something that we don't want so nevertheless um martel has displayed that he's a great father but as a husband he sucks ass literally um, he has been very disrespectful every season. We have seen him, um, be not only has he been very cocky, um, uh, about his male Jezebel shenanigans, but he's been very revealing, um, season after season. He started putting more out there, um, as he was spinning, as he was, you know, hanging out with the rest of the guys in the group, you know, Marceau and, you know, uh, you know, the rest of the guys, you know, um, he just started getting kind of beside himself, you know, he started being more and more open about this woman that he was seeing, um, on the, on the outside of his marriage. And, um, it got to the point to where he became so comfortable and seeing this other woman, um, that he was not protecting his wife, um, not in the least bit. Um, to the point to where he was very bold in letting her know about this other woman that he was seeing. Um, yeah, Maurice. Maurice is the other, you know, so I'm got, trying to get all these. It's so many M's. Martel, Marceau, Maurice. That's crazy. Um, with the right show. So, you know, again, Martel, you know, has been very open and very forward with, with Marceau and Maurice and, you know, all of these other guys on the show, letting them know, you know, that he's basically having a time of his life, you know, with this side chick, you know, how she's pleasing him and fulfilling him. Now, it's one thing to tell your homeboys that, but every time you and your wife get in an argument, you have to let her know, you know, uh, how much you love to pretty much put your dick out there and that you pretty much love to do you and that you're going to continue doing you and you don't care how she feels about it you don't care if her feelings are hurt you don't care um basically who knows about it and martel has been basically been a dog throughout this whole process he has not had no shame none whatsoever and it eventually got to a broken point in which he became so comfortable with dealing with this other woman, he ended up getting her pregnant. And that was finally the breaking point for Melanie where she realized, you know, I got to quit while I'm ahead. This marriage is not going to get any better. Uh, I, I got to take an L on this one. So Melanie, you know decided that, you know, it was best for her to go ahead and file a divorce. And I cannot blame her for that under any circumstances. I mean, um, it's bad enough to be disrespectful, to cheat and mess around um, on your significant other. But once a child is conceived, that is the utmost disrespect. That is betrayal to the third power. And although you have had some couples who have survived it, um, not many people are going to tolerate uh, that level of disrespect. And I can totally understand it. Uh, Martel is one of those men, he makes it very hard to forgive him because not only is he so honorary in his wrongdoing, but he is the king of deflection. 
He has been deflecting, deflecting, deflecting throughout this whole process ever since he got caught uh, with this appetizer, this coleslaw, Arianne Curry. That is the name that she goes by. He's been trying his damnness to flip the script, this reverse psychology, because he's basically a narcissist and he's a manipulator, and most narcissists are manipulators. So he has done everything under the sun um, to try to justify his whole shenanigans, his male Jezebel ways, uh, by coming up with all kind of stuff, stating that Melanie cheated on him first and um, he felt Mel was messing around on him and his infamous line, which is something most narcissists say, especially those who are compulsive cheaters. You was not satisfying me enough. Now, I find it ironic that when you have an individual that constantly complains that their wife is not satisfying them enough, their husband is not satisfying them enough. I, th this has become um, the myth of a cheater. This is one of those delusional uh, manipulative uh, cheater lines that they like to use that they're not satisfied enough now even though they claim they're not satisfied they're not pleased that their significant other is not satisfying them enough they will never leave they will just keep cheating but stating I'm not satisfied now which one is it if you're not satisfied why do why won't you just divorce your husband, your wife, that way you can go out there and get all your satisfaction fulfilled. If that's if that's your real reasoning for why you're not happy being in your marriage. No, you want to have your cake and eat it too. And Martel basically was trying to have the best of both worlds. Here it is, he has this wife, Melanie, who is the mother of all four of his children, okay? Strong, successful, black businesswoman, all about winning, all about making bread, all about building a legacy. You don't have a lot of black women who think on that level. You have some black women that just want to have a good time, keep having babies. They're not about building and about establishing something. This is a woman who actually wanted to build something and have something. And through all of that, Martel still took it upon himself to start stepping outside his marriage, dealing with this coleslaw whole slaw, side dish, appetizer. Um, he decided to deal with the, with this appetizer, Arion, Arion the appetizer, younger female. Um, he he decided to start, you know, uh, having an affair with her, and he had been seeing this female for years throughout their marriage, and it basically got to the point to where the more he continued to see a Arion the appetizer, the more disrespectful. He became with Melanie because he started getting beside himself. So um, any woman who's been in this situation knows that usually when a man steps out on you, uh, his, his arrogance, his cockiness, um, it, it, it tends to it tends to boost his ego because he's looking at it like he's getting the best of both worlds. Here it is. I got this wife. That's a businesswoman, mother of my children, holding down the home, holding me down, taking care of the bills, you know, doing her part as a wife. But at the same time, when I get bored with being a husband and I just want to, you know, get, get some more stimulation. I want to be sexually stimulated. I want a little bit of excitement. I want to be, get a little sexual ex escapade here and there. Here it is. I got this young tenderoni out here who um, is young and dumb enough to give me whatever I want because she has no problem with me being married. And this is basically the whole point of me doing this content. Uh, it is based on, I'm using Mel Melanie Halt and Martel Holt as a reference, but it's really based on the simple fact that you cannot get blessed destroying another woman's nest. A lot of these women out here are not understanding that a lot of them don't care, a lot of them are cold, a lot of them are heartless, and truth is a lot of them are selfish. They do not care what the other woman has to go through, because in their mind, if he was really happy, if she was doing her job, he wouldn't be with me. He wouldn't be um, coming to me, and th this is one of those side chicks delusional. Um, this is this is the psyche of a delusional side chick of a delusional appetizer. They really believe that they serve a real purpose in a married man's life. Um, in their minds, they feel like they're doing a good deed by fulfilling and giving the man something that he claims he's missing, and not understanding that. 
For a man to claim that he's so unhappy. For a man to claim that he's so dissatisfied. For a man to claim that he's so miserable. He's not miserable, dissatisfied enough to leave his marriage. Action speak louder than words. A man can sit up here all day and tell you, I am tired, I'm bored, she does not love me, she don't care about me. But the, at the same token, while he's telling you that, he's going home to this woman every night. Not only is he going home to her every night, he's still performing as a husband. Meaning that he's still paying the bills. He's still taking care of the children. He's still going out on trips with his wife. Taking his wife out to dinner. They're going on cruises. They're still doing things that married couples do. He's still intimate with his wife. Having sex with his wife. Doing all of this. He, he, gets, to, he gets to wear two different hats. And he gets the best of both worlds. So while the side chick is up here believing... Believing the lies, believing the manipulation, that he's really unhappy. Yet, she's not looking at the fact that his actions are not matching up with his words. A, a man can tell you he's miserable all day. A man can tell you he's dissatisfied all day. Or, I'm just with her for the sake of my kids. Okay, you're saying all of that, but every time you turn around, you seeing them out to dinner and the kids ain't even with them. You seeing them go, you, 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 you low key stalking his Instagram, low key stalking his Facebook, and you see him and the wife out having a good time. They going out to the jazz club. They having dinner. They're, they're doing things that married couples do. But he's telling you he's not happy. Oh, and then a lot of them too, they will even go so far as telling, telling side chick, I don't sleep with my wife. We sleep in separate rooms. We don't even sleep together. That is the biggest lie ever. That is the biggest lie ever. And, th and that is the other key to the puzzle. Is that Melanie and Martell had their last child recently. And that child is around the same age or close in months to the child that he actually had. Uh, that the side chick, Arion, had conceived. Um, when they did a reunion. And he was asked by the hostess about how old his child is that he had from the appetizer. He would not say the age. He would not acknowledge the child's birthday. Um, and we know for good reason the reason why he's not doing that. Because he knows if he reveals that child's age, people are going to put the math together and know that he got his wife and his mistress pregnant at the same time. So, ironically, um, since this side chick, this appetizer has had his child, she's been very low-key and very discreet about it. Um, she won't post anything. She won't post any baby pictures on Instagram or her Facebook. He won't post any pictures of the child. Um, for whatever reason, they're being very discreet. Now, keep in mind, she has posted up one picture, but you can only see the back of the child's head. You cannot see the child's face. So, I'm not sure why they're being so discreet. Why Martel and his appetizer uh, baby mama is being so discreet about um, the child being seen. Because it's already been put out there. Everybody already knows, you know, he has disrespected his wife and violated his vows. And everybody knows Ariane, the appetizer. Um, she has disrespected herself by having a child from somebody else's husband. So, I don't know what all the dignity and, and where all of a sudden now y'all want to be so protective and discreet. Because everything's out in the open. Like the song goes. So, we don't know the reasons for the discreet. The, the being so discreet only thing I could gather is that maybe because the show is still in process of filming maybe when the show is complete when all the seasons have completely come to an end uh, maybe then Martel may feel comfortable with revealing the child uh, or maybe Martel is so embarrassed by his actions because believe it or not um, Martel has lost a lot of endorsements behind this. Um, the, the, the reality shows are a blessing and a curse. He has lost a lot of endorsements. You know, um, everybody that knows about him having this child from his appetizer, um, it's not a good look. When people see his face, you know, it's not a good look for their brand because anybody who's a follower of the show, uh, 
in, in people who are from that area, you know, because they live, I think, what, Houston? No, Huntsville or whatever. So it's, it's, a, it's a small county. Um, everybody knows everybody. So at this point, unfortunately, no, nobody's not trying to touch him. Nobody really wants his face anywhere um, on the brand. You know, because of the embarrassment he has caused his wife and his family. Now, keep in mind, him and his wife have a real estate business together. Did not know. Oh, Huntsville, Alabama. Okay, Alabama. I almost said Houston. I mean, Texas. <laughs> Huntsville, Alabama is where the cast is from. Now, all this time, while he's out here slinging dick, um, spreading penis like COVID, all this time, um, no one had a clue that he did not have his real estate license. All this time, it was his wife, Melody, who had the real estate business. So, my thing is, you're going out here, you know, messing around with another female, impregnating another female, and you, on the other hand, your wife is basically the breadwinner. So, all of this unfolded later on, um... After the exposure of this child uh, was brought to the forefront, all this time he's acted had us fooled like he's the one leading everything and running everything. He's the man of the house and he's the business headed one. All this time it was his wife, and you know what? A lot of these side chicks, these appetizers, they see a, a married man that's successful. Um, they see his business. They they see the name, you know, on the brand. And I, I've noticed uh, there's been several occasions in which a lot of appetizers think the men are the one that are running the show. Think the men are the one that owns the business, that's running the business. But behind every boss man is a boss lady, is a boss chick that's holding him down, that's making it happen. And in many cases, a lot of these women are the ones that are leading everything. Um, this is the part that a lot of the appetizers and side chicks don't understand. Just because you see a man with a lot of money, you see a man that got his own business, he's driving a nice car, that don't mean he's the one that's running everything. That don't mean he the one that's orchestrated it, that started it. Um, it's, in many cases, it's the woman. In some cases, some of these men come into marriages with not a pot to piss in or want to throw it out of, but you have a woman, if she loves a man enough, she's willing to accept him even though he, she knows he's not bringing a lot, a, lot, a lot of money or college degrees. He's not bringing a whole lot to the table. But you have some women that look at it like this. You know, if we're married, we're a team, I'm going to help this man build. If this man is going to be my husband, we're going to build together. We're going to build a legacy together. We're going to build an empire together. Men and men who got their businesses did not do it on their own. A lot of these married men did not get businesses on their own. Behind a successful married man, nine times out of ten is a successful woman who sacrificed a lot to get him to where he is. And a lot of these appetizers don't know that. And I know in many instances, a lot of them really don't give a damn because it's all about them benefiting. So Arion, the appetizer, being young and dumb, you know, uh, not understanding that she's looking at Martell and a lot of these appetizers look at these married men like they're the ones who got it. In actuality, it's the wives who got it. You know how many wives... They had to sit up there and co-sign because their credit was better than their husbands to get loans. You know how many wives had to sit up there and, and pull connections for a man to, to, to be able to pull off certain things? A wife had to go to her uncle who's a lawyer. A wife had to go to her father who, who's who been running business for years and saying, Dad, could you look out for me and my husband? You know, a lot of wives, married women pull strings like no other. To make sure these husbands are their husbands are successful, because at the end of the day, it's all about building an empire and making sure your family win. So Martel was truly blessed. He had something that a lot of black men cannot get. You know, you have a lot of men men that are married to women. That's just a burden. Can't help them build nothing. Can't help them start a business, a company. You know, um, a lot of wives have put their name on the line. You know, my husband is a business owner. And I'm not going to take all the credit, but 
He is the reason. I'm the reason he got a lot of the stuff he got. Okay. All right. And down to a lot of his business trucks was in my name. You feel me? You know, when his license was suspended before he got it straightened out, all my names were on his business trucks. Okay. And you'll, and you'll see these appetizers, see such and such roofing, and think it's all just him. Not even realizing I'm a big key to the business, to his business, to his accomplishments. And a lot of these appetizers don't understand that, you know. And um, me me Melanie was basically the backbone. Now... Uh, Martel is running around like a chicken with his head cut off trying to get uh, his real estate license had he kept his dick in his pants and made his family a priority more than his hormones he could have been living a good life he could have been retired early he could have not struggled and not wanted for anything but his penis was more important than his lust was more important than his legacy Okay, you know, getting laid was more important to him than laying the foundation for his family. So in the midst of that, he lost all of that. Okay, he lost his backbone. He lost his foundation, his wife. You know, his wife was his foundation. So when he got this other woman knocked up, you know, Mel had to deal with the embarrassment. Had to deal with the embarrassment of everybody knowing. And that's what a lot of married men and women don't understand. Uh, a lot of your actions, it reflects how people perceive you and perceive your spouse. Uh, it's been plenty of people, plenty of married couples, uh, who did not do anything wrong. You know, uh, it was the wife who stepped out. The husband was doing everything he was supposed to do as the husband. He was being a provider. Um, he was being a leader. And yet his wife stepped out on him. And now you got everybody looking at him like, dude, damn. You not running shit. You not running nothing. You Evidently, you ain't leading anything. Your wife out here stepping out on you. What are you leading? What are you running? You must be a simp. You must be weak. Or a good wife, the husband could step out. Everybody looking at her sideways, like, oh, this who you married to? This, this, your man, you didn't know your husband, your man was stepping out on you? It, it's sad, but the, the innocent counterpart, um, they take a lot of heat every time the significant other who is the, the guilty party, you know, everybody, I notice it's the ones who have not done anything that get the most licks, who get the most hits. You stupid. You dumb. How did you not know what your wife or your husband was doing? So, um, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people, um, you know, looked at, uh, you know, Melanie sideways. They looked at her sideways. Making her, uh, Making trying to attack Melanie for what Martel did. And it was Martel. He made that decision. He was the one who chose to step out on his wife to jeopardize their business, to jeopardize their legacy. And unfortunately, now, you know, he's paying a price. Um, he has to live with that. He's he's paying he's paying the price and he has to live with that. Um, he's lost everything, and now he's looking at, looked at as the joke, and here it is, the side chick now, um, she's more and more eager, she's trying to come out, she's trying to gain relevance, and it has not been working out in her favor, um, Arion the appetizer, she's been trying to gain notoriety. Um, through Martel's infidelity with her. And this has, this, I can never understand with a lot of these side chicks how a lot of them are so proud of destroying another woman's household. Um, a lot of them are very honorary and very bigoty. And, um, 
they basically they don't feel bad they're not embarrassed um that they are the demise of a marriage that they are the cause of it um you know a lot of them you know they want to be recognized so arian being the young and dumb appetizer she is she's been trying so hard to gain relevance and Every door she has knocked on, she has not been successful. She has tried to start a business because, mind you, a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of side chicks, what they aim to do is they try to position themselves to be like the wives. They want what the wives got. They want the life. They want the benefits. They want the luxury. They want everything that the wife has now Arion has been trying so badly to mimic Melanie because Melanie is a boss chick Melanie has all type of businesses I mean she's an entrepreneur she's badass you know despite all the embarrassment and ridicule and everything she has had to sustain through this embarrassment through her husband's infidelity She's been holding it down. She's been being very classy about it. And what I can say about Melanie also is she has not said anything bad about the appetizer. Even though the appetizer has been trying to speak, has spoken very negatively on male. And I'm like, bitch, who are you to be going at another woman, especially when your baby daddy was married, was a husband to this woman? You need to stay in your lane. You don't need to be saying anything to Melanie or about Melanie. The appetizer has been very disrespectful because, again, these side chicks, they don't do like the side chicks back in the day. They don't know how to not be seen, how to not be, no, the side chicks back in the day stayed in the back. No, these side chicks, now they want to come to the front. And Ariane has been very disrespectful, thanks to Martel. You know, not keeping the side appetizer in check. She's been calling Melanie stupid hoes, dumb, all type of degrading, disrespectful names. When the only stupid ho I see here is you, Ariana Appetizer. Because, again, this man was already married. You could have put your vagina in your energy into a man that did not already belong to somebody. You could have had what Melanie had had you did it the right way. Had you that this is what a lot of side chicks are not understanding. If you meet a man who's not married and he does not belong to anyone, that means you can build your own legacy from scratch. You got your own man you can have your own babies from. You can build your own household with. You don't have to deal with that extracurricular drama. You don't have to deal with being second, your child coming second, or you just a holiday hoe. You only being, you know, seeing every other holiday or whatever. Um, you block your own blessings. You know, when you're up here involving yourself with another married man, because keep in mind all the time, the energy, the sex, the emotions. Everything you're investing into this married man could have very well been invested into a man who did not already have ties to a family or a marriage. So you block your own blessings when you have no problem with destroying another woman's nest. And that's basically what happened. So Arion, the appetizer, has been trying to do Everything Melanie does. And it has not been working. Like I said, you will not get blessed destroying another woman's nest. Arion has tried to start home croc business, uh, selling them ugly ass croc shoes. Nobody brought them. Um, she's tried a couple of other businesses. No one has taken her serious. And even though she has been very disrespectful to male... This married woman, male took the high road. Male did not allow herself to stoop to her level of ratchetness. She has said one or two things, but she never really went in like she could have. And that's just being a grown-ass woman. When well, you're a grown-ass woman and you know what you are made of, and you know um, your position, um, you don't have to go around going toe-to-toe -to -toe with no appetizer. 
You don't have to go back and forth and, and state your position and state your leverage. You already know your leverage. Anytime a person got to keep barking and stating they claim, it's because you really know you don't have no bite in the fight. Ariane knows she has no bite in the fight, you know, so she's been around here trying to instigate, provoke, and saying things out the way to try to get Melanie out, Mel, Melanie out of character, and it hasn't been working. And like any, like, like any other child, when you ignore a child, you know, they just keep pushing and pushing the envelope. Um, and Ariane has been her trying her best to push the envelope. Um... And Melanie has not been responding. So everything she's been trying, Ariane, the appetizer, it has not gone anywhere. And to add insult to injury, um, because Martel's wife was the primary uh, business head at one. She was the one with the real estate license. Now Martel has lost those benefits. So therefore, Ariane cannot benefit off of those benefits. You know, because of the divorce being finalized, um, now Martel does not get the share of that empire with his wife that he once had. Um, now he does not have the luxury of being able to be with his kids uh, full time under the same household. He has to visit them on the weekends. He has to visit them, you know, during visitations and stuff. So, um, he really cheated himself, you know, and, and you have a lot of mad men. They're not understanding that because they don't see past the moment. They're too busy enjoying getting laid. They're too busy enjoying getting ahead. They're too busy enjoying the benefits of the appetizer that they can't see past the future. Not realizing, okay, if I get caught, I get exposed. What all am I going to lose? I'm going to lose my house. Not only am I going to lose my empire, now I got to kick out two sets of income to two different households because uh, he has to pay male child support and now he has to pay the appetizer child support. See, this is what happens when you don't keep your dick in one house. Um, everybody gets the benefit off of you. You got to compensate. You got to pay this woman over here. You got to pay that woman over there. You got to pay that woman over there. When you just should have been better off keeping your dick, giving your dick to one woman or keeping your penis in the same household. That eliminates all of that. You know, um, side chicks are expensive, especially when you have children from them, because now you don't have a choice. The state is going to see to it that you take care of these children, you know, and I, I want to get back to this line about not being satisfied, because it really rubs me the wrong way when I hear married men or women who say this about not being satisfied. Truth be told, if you are a man or a woman who's not fulfilled with yourself, it does not matter. No one would never be enough. Nothing would ever be enough to fulfill you. Martel already was raised without a father in his household. Um, he has a mother that has pretty much enabled him in all his wrongdoing the majority of his life. So Martel, like many men and women, um, he has no self-satisfaction. He does not feel whole as a man on his own. So, therefore, um, it does not matter. No woman will ever be enough to fulfill him. Now, even Ariane Curry, the appetizer, the one who was popping all this smack to male, disrespecting this woman, even she had to admit that Martel is a piece of work. Even she admitted that Martel is nasty. Even she admitted that Martel, Martel could be an asshole. Even she had to come clean and admit that it's not all fun and games being this nigga's appetizer. And a lot of these side chicks, they don't want to admit to that. They don't want to admit that being an appetizer does not have all its perks and bonuses like they pretend it has. And being a, being an appetizer, you put yourself in a position where you have to do the most ass kiss away more than the wife because you already are worried that if you rub him the wrong way or if you get out, out the way, get out of pocket with him, he can get on his nasty tantrums and be like, F it, you know, I'm not coming to see you, I don't want nothing to do with you, you know, because the truth is, he already has a wife, and the fact that he knows that you knew that, that already puts you at a disadvantage, 
So the side chick, you got to constantly be on your P's and Q's. You have to make sure you don't say the wrong thing. You don't do the wrong thing because you don't want to turn them off and put them in a position where you piss them off and he no longer wants to see you. He, you know, can go for months at a time not having anything to do with you. So as a side chick, you got to always be the good girl. You got to always, you know, make sure you pleasing him. You, you got to go all out and, and, and go above and beyond because you already know that he'll never 100% be yours. So, therefore, it's going to always, um, you know, keep you walking on eggshells. So, you know, a lot of times these mad men can get away with disrespecting these side chicks and saying all kind of things and doing all kind of things because, again, the side chick, the appetizer, the coleslaw, does not want to run him off. She does not want him to leave her. So she will accept all type of disrespect, all type of mistreatment. She will accept it because she's thinking that if she hangs in there in a the long haul, eventually, you know, she'll get that trophy. You know, she'll get that. She'll be, she, you know, eventually he'll leave the wife and he'll be with me. Um, they hold on to this hope and this dream. And the actuality is if male wanted to, because you got some women that are like this. You got some women just because they know the side chick want them to leave. You have some women that will not leave their marriages just to prove a point to the side chick. Yeah, bitch, I know you want my husband. But because I know you want him, and even though I'm not liking the fact that he's stepping out on my marriage to deal with you, guess what? I know you want me to leave. You hope and I'm going to leave. You praying on me to leave. So you can be the next in line. No, bitch. I'm going to be right here. You have a lot of married women now. And, you know, a lot of women call. A lot of women will say. Women who accept this type of behavior. Married women who accept this type of behavior. They're dumb. They're weak. They're docile. You know, a real woman ain't going to stand there. And allow a man to disrespect her. Married or not. I understand. I agree. However. You got some women that are just as determined as these side chicks. Just like you got a side chick that's determined to never stop fucking this lady's husband. I'm going to fuck him no matter how she feel. I'm going to always be around no matter how she feel. Just like you got side chicks who are so pressed and they have decided and determined they aren't going anywhere. Guess what? You got married women who are the same way. So who benefits in the long run? It's the man. Because the wife ain't going nowhere. The side chick ain't going nowhere. So everybody's stuck because it's all about winning. It's all about one-ups. I know she want me to leave. I'm not leaving. You know. And in the meanwhile, the child, the, the kid, I mean, the, the, the husband is benefiting. But like anything else, it all good things come to an end. We've seen instances in which men have died. Okay. Now the side chick don't get nothing. The man is dead and gone. The wife get everything. All right? Because that's who he was legally married to before he passed away. Or a child gets involved. Now you as the side chick, you got to explain to your child as they continuously get older and they're asking questions that their, their daddy was a married man when you got pregnant from them. You know, it, it, it eventually, you know, it's fun and games for a while, but it eventually catches up. And you're going to answer, you know, for whatever seed that you produce, whatever seed you put out there, that seed is reproducing itself. And you're going to have to pay debt to karma. And that's basically what's going on with Ariane, like a lot of side chicks. Um, she has not been winning. At all. She's been in the struggle. She's been trying to start businesses. Um, and most importantly, she wants to get on the show so bad. She swears because her name keeps getting brought up in the show um, through mail. You know, they haven't really like, been verbally saying her name. But we all know who she is when they bring up coleslaw or um, baby mama. We know who she is, you know. She wants so badly, she's hoping that Oprah or own who's ever over the network is going to give her that privilege to be able to join on the show. But what she's not understanding is that's not going to happen because Melanie is one of the producers on the show. That this is what I'm saying. A lot of these side chicks don't know what they're up against when they're messing with these married men because it's not the married men you got to worry about. It's the women. It's the wives. You know, even though the husband is being a hoe, 
The wives aren't stupid. They're not dumb. Um, they are holding it down while you're only getting dick down. Okay? So, um, call it stupid. Call it weak. Call it what you want to. But you have some women who honor their marriage vows all the way to the core. Feel like, yeah, my husband a hoe, but guess what? That's my husband. That's my hoish husband. You got some women who feel that way. And you got some side chicks who feel like, yeah, I know he's a married man, but he's my married man. <laughs> I mean, you you have, you, well, once a woman has allowed denial and delusions to take roots in her mental psyche, there's nothing you can really do to entertain, entertain, entertain change that um it's going to take something to happen something drastic to happen and in many cases what's going on now is you can tell martel is having severe regrets he's having a lot of regrets see it was fun in games when he was able to, to go lay up and leave his house as much as he wanted to and still come home when he's tired of hoeing. Now he could come home and be a husband, be a family man. So he had the advantages of both. And what has happened is, I mean, my mother have talked about this. You know, what has happened is Martel, unfortunately, has programmed himself to only be able to function with the both of them as long as he had the both of them. And that that that's that's what that is what he became accustomed to. He became accustomed to having the best of both worlds. And you have a lot of married men who put themselves in that position. When you've been home for so long, you don't had your side chick for years, you don't had your wife for years, and one of them finally gets fed up and decides to be the game changer and say, fuck that, y'all can have each other. It's not the same because you're used to having both. And that's what happened with Martel. He was used to the best of both worlds. And when Melanie flipped the script on him and, and changed the game, it only left him with Arion. Now he does not want Arion anymore because he's used to having a full meal. He's used to having a full meal. He don't just want the coleslaw or the biscuit now. He was used to the chicken, the macaroni and cheese, and a cow slaw. He was used to having it all. Now that the chicken and the macaroni gone, all he got is a coleslaw, he's not fulfilled enough. And see, that's the part as a man where well, you have to be careful. Or as a woman also. Um when you're when you're getting your when you have allowed yourself to be invested in two people at the same time, you can't live one without the other. And that's what happened to Martel. Um, he made himself become so accustomed when his wife was getting on his nerves or not giving him what he felt he wanted. He could always run to appetizer, Arion. Arion was getting needy, clingy, running them in the ground. When you going to leave your wife? When you going to be together? He was able to escape her and go back to his wife. He really didn't have to, he really didn't have to deal with reality. And that's the way it is when you are the cheater. The cheater does not have to deal with the reality. The adulterer, the person who's committing the adultery acts, adulterous acts, um, they have always been able to escape reality. When something don't work out, they've always had the room to go back and forth. But eventually, something happens. Somebody finally gets fed up. Somebody passes away. Something eventually changes the dynamics. And now you can't have that cake and eat it too. I mean that that's done now. You know you have lost um, the privileges that you have spoiled yourself to having, um, and that's basically what's going on right now. So you know um, this is what a lot of women are understanding. I'll also say the same thing um, with Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams, the talk show host. You know her. Luck has definitely gone down, you know, since Kevin Hunter left her for his mistress. And the same thing, Kevin Hunter's, uh, you know, fiance, because he's, they're going to be getting married. That's already been put out there. Um, 
she's another one. She's been trying to start our kind of business ventures. She's been trying to start her own, you know, cook line, you know, um, cooking wear line. Everything she's tried to do, um, she has not been successful. You know, uh, only difference with her, I would say, like Ariane, um, she's all she she's doesn't try to be seen as much. Um, she's not going around here attacking Wendy Williams all in interviews. Yeah, she wasn't pleasing her man. You know, she's not doing like Ariane. Um, uh, and she's trying to be low key. You know, she's not out there acting like she's proud of it. I guess. Um, but she has. Not been able to, you know, get any success. People know her face. People know know her for who she is. They know her as um, Kevin Hunter's mistress, baby mama. Um, a lot of people, especially in the industry, you know, once your name has been tainted, once you once you have been associated to something negative. Um, it's, it's not too many people that's going to put you on a brand. You know, a lot of people aren't going to promote your business. They're not going to get involved with you business wise because your reputation, reputation is everything. That doesn't got nothing to do. You let me tell you something. You got a plus credit. Once you get a reputation, a bad one, your credit is no good. Your name is no good. Um, Kevin Hunter's fiance has not been able to catch a break. And the thing about these, a lot of things about these side chicks, um, they think that because the men that they are involved with is associated to someone. With notoriety, uh, uh, these side chicks think they're going to be a third party beneficiary. Of these men that were once married or linked to these successful women. And it does not go that way. You you cannot be a... Uh, 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 a well-known mistress who destroyed or took part, because again, this doesn't get the men off the hook. You can't be a part of a person's marital demise and now that you have that woman's husband, now you're trying to do with that woman's, with that man's famous woman or business wife has done and think that you're going to reap the same benefits. It's not going to happen. Um, Sharina, like I said, uh, Kevin Hunter's fiance. Nobody wants to do business with her. If anything, it's all on him, you know. But the sad part is she will get to benefit off of Wendy's money through what Kevin Hunter earned through that divorce settlement. But the thing about it is it's going to always keep her under his thumb. She's never going to be able to branch out and do her own thing, start her own business venture. Nobody's not going to want to invest in her brand, want to become business partners with her because of what she's known for. She basically tainted herself through, be, through, through destroying another woman's nest. And that's why I tell these women, you cannot be blessed destroying another woman's nest. I don't care what that man tell you, that he's miserable, he not happy. Don't block your blessings 
by entering another woman's nest all because her husband is saying he is not happy, he wants out. Until he finalizes and divorces those papers, and I don't mean be with him while he's supposedly supposed to be um, filing papers, until he's actually done and it's over, you don't need to get yourself involved. Sharina husband, um, she tried to start a, 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 her own vegan company by making vegan pancakes. Nobody took it serious. She wants her own identity and she cursed herself. Appetizers, you curse yourself when you get involved with married men. You block your blessings. If you've been involved with somebody's husband and you wonder why everything you're trying is failing, you're not progressing, you're not getting ahead, or you'll get ahead only to have to fail every time you think you finally accomplish something, you may need to do some heavy repenting. You may need to sit down and ask for forgiveness. And meanwhile, be humble. Stop being seen. Stop going around exploiting this woman whose marriage you destroyed, you need to take the high road, reach some type of civil agreement if there's a child involved, but you don't need to be walking around here parading that you're happy to have uh, to, to, to be a, a, a mistress of a married man while carrying this child. That is nothing to be proud of. If anything, you should be ashamed. You should be embarrassed. And what you need to do is be a woman of discreet and sit back and keep your mouth closed. Stop trying to be seen. People won't notice you as much. People won't, won't sting you as much if you're not out here you know, being all bigoty and boasty, people will forget about it eventually. Because they at least see you trying to humble yourself. But when you're being bigoty and boastful and you're proud and you're brassy, and then you're being disrespectful, especially when everybody knows you're the cause of a marriage that has failed, you and that woman's husband, both of y'all are the cause of the marriage that has failed. Keep in mind, you're going to continue to keep getting L's. And Ariana, the appetizer, is going to find out. She's going to keep getting L's. No one is not going to respect her. Yeah, you'll have one or two. It's, I, I went on her Instagram. It's, it's always going to be a few that's going to co-sign on the fuckery. But for the most part, a lot of people do not respect this woman. And she's young and she's dumb. And she's not understanding that. And God don't bless no mess. You, you can't sit up here and involve yourself in somebody's marriage and think you're going to get blessed. And think one day you're going to get a good husband. If you do get a husband, you're going to wreak your own karma because he's going to turn around and do the same thing. It's just going to keep going. But um, anyway, I have chatted long enough. You know, I haven't uploaded on my Mocha's uh, Cafe Day Paris channel. So, you know, that's why this content is a little over an hour. But I'm going to get ready to shut it down. So, anyway, y'all, if y'all have not checked out the show, Love and Match in Huntsville, I recommend y'all do that. That'll give you a lot more understanding. For those of you who are watching the show, who pretty much have a, a, a decent background on it. Um, give me y'all opinion on this uh, show. What do you, what do y'all think our intake is as far as Martel Holt and um, Melanie Holt's you know situation with Adrian Curry, the appetizer. Um, give me y'all intake on that. What do y'all think? Pretty much from this point on uh, is going to happen because looks like I say stated. Um, their luck has gone downhill. Martel has not been able to catch a break. Um, his name is already tainted all over Huntsville, Alabama. Um, a lot of people don't want to. A lot of people don't want to do businesses with him. A lot of real estate agencies are kind of shying away from him. Um, not only that, like I said, Ariane has tried everything she can to try to be relevant 
people keep shutting her down they keep closing the door on her so what is your intake on this show um for those of you who don't know anything about the show what is your intake in general on these side chicks thinking they're going to get blessed by destroying another woman's nest what is your intake on that um ladies again if you have not subscribed please make sure y'all subscribe to mocha's ladies lounge my channel for women only make sure you ladies subscribe all right so anyway uh make sure y'all hit that like thumb it up y'all before you leave it's only free well hell ain't no dislike button no more but you're welcome to dislike it <laughs> You're just not going to see the dislikes. And that, that's crazy. Um, The dislike feature is gone. So um, I, I kind of like the dis dislike feature being gone. I'm not going to lie because um, it, it gives people a bad judgment about your content. Um, if you have 300 dislikes and, and, and 20 likes, people are automatically not going to view your video. You know, it, it, it's sad, but... That's how the social media world works. People only want to go where they see the most likes. So I think it's a good thing in a sense, uh, you know, because some people just dislike your stuff, that dislike your content, just so they can dislike it. You know what I mean? It got nothing to do with your message. Your message could be powerful, but just because it's coming from you and they don't like you, or you're not relevant enough to them, they don't feel like they need to show you love, you know, or all the agree by thumbing up with your content. So I actually like the feature. Um I think it is more of an advantage for us than a disadvantage. But anyway y'all I'm going to shut it down. It is your girl Yoga. And now Jay Moko is at Moko's Cafe the Pedalist on Mobile Seven with the knowledge and spiritual awareness. Be blessed. Take care.